what up, keys? Andy Lip here, back with another OBS tutorial, and today we're kind of looking at the top five shader filters that I genuinely couldn't stream without. Shader filters add so much more kind of dynamic into your stream and make it just a bit more interactive and a little bit more fun for viewers to watch, or even just makes it look a little bit more tidy and modern, like some of the, the filters I use, like rounded corners, for instance, which you see in every single one of these videos. I'd love to hear what you guys love using shader filter-wise, so please bear that in mind, and if you've got any different opinions, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see what shader filters you guys use and what you have as a favorite. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Put your rock over the stone. Let's go. So if you guys have never used shader filters before, I have got a full video on how to download it and get it all installed, but it is a plugin that is available for OBS. There are a couple of different versions of this plugin, but I think this one by CERN is probably the best one that I, I prefer to use. I find that it crashes the least and it just kind of it just works. I mean, there are a couple of bugs that I run into every now and then. To be honest, it's probably the most downloaded one as well. So I, I use this one. It's the one that I use in all my videos. So you can just download it from the OBS website. All the links are in the description description and also links to my videos but the first plugin that I want to well the first shader sorry that I want to show you is rounded rectangles this is exactly the one that I'm using in the video now as you can see we kind of go full screen and then when we go smaller again we have got uh, rounded corners that pop in again I'm using another plugin for uh for OBS, which is the move transition filter that allows you to move values. So this is where shader filters become really powerful. So definitely check my video out on that. So rounded rectangle, it's actually um, available on Excel Drive's GitHub now. Uh, I do believe it is available in the OBS shader filter, the newer version. So you can update it and you should see it in there. But if not, you can download it from Excel Drive's GitHub just here. He does have a couple of different versions of the shader as well. And I've covered them all in videos in the past. He's got the uh, rounded rectangle per corner. So if you don't want all four corners the, the same roundness, you can do them individually as well, which is pretty cool. So I, I prefer just the rounded rectangle. I think it looks really modern. But I'm going to show you exactly how that kind of works. So if we just jump into OBS and go to filters and add the effect, which is the user defined shader, and I can just call it rounded for now. Press OK. Load shader from text. Press browse. And then we can search your examples page or wherever you downloaded it to. And the one that I'm using is probably the rounded stroke one. There are a couple of different versions of this as Excel has changed it along the way. But if I do rounded stroke, I get a couple of different options just here. I'm going to make this smaller just so we can see it. I can turn the corner radius up. So as I turn the corner radius up, that's going to make the corners bigger. So I can uh, unclick that. You can probably see now just around the edges of here. They're starting to get larger and larger, as you can see, until you get a nice rounded edge. So I can leave that at 50. I can also add a border, which is really nice, like so. And then I can also change the color of the border if I really wanted to. So bright green, for instance. You can change that and modify that however you want. The minimum alpha percentage, if I uh, turn that to, to zero, it just means that it's not going to work. But if I start using a kind of uh, color correction and an alpha channel, it just means that this won't be active until the alpha percent has reached a certain threshold. That's pretty much all there is to it on that one. I, I love that, that shader. I think it looks super clean and crisp. And it means you don't have to mess about with image mass or anything like that. Like I say, check out the video for more details. So another shader filter that I genuinely don't do my live streams without, I use it for my sub alert, and it's like a trippy crab rave type thing where I spin around and loads of rainbows fly, it is the rainbow shader. This is actually available in the OBS shader filter plugin that I mentioned before, it's bundled in that already. We just right click on whatever source we want to add it to, add a filter, and then user defined shader, I'm just going to call it rainbow for now. And we can load the shader from text file, press browse, and we'll scroll down to rainbow shader just here. And it'll look like that. It'll replace our image. So we can't see the webcam there anymore, but the webcam definitely is there. We just need to tinker with some settings. So we can change the saturation if we want to. Say if we change that to 0.0, .0 it goes fully gray. 10, you can see the saturation level increases. So we can completely change that. Luminosity, we can change as well. So if I make that even higher, you kind of create bit more of a pastel effect 
almost, which looks really nice, I think, depending on what you're looking for. Change the spread on how much it's spread out. I think that's fine. The speed, I could turn that down so you can get a really nice, subtle change, as you're seeing there, uh, like a subtle gradient, so you can create some really cool overlay effects without having to use overlays. And then we can change it to vertical if we want to, because right now it was just spreading left to right, or we can even do rotational as well. So it kind of spins in a circle. I love this effect. I think it looks beautiful. Uh, we can apply to image. So now it will apply that kind of color onto our image. But as you can see, uh, it's quite dim in the background. So we've got a different button that we could press, like replace color. So depending on what we've changed these settings to, so if I bring this luminosity down, you, we can start changing how much color comes through and how bright it is. We can also change the alpha percentage to make it a little bit more see-through. You can see there, depending on what desired effect that we want. Say if I change that to 10, you'll get this really subtle color change. So say if you had like, um, you were using the rounded corners with a border, you could just pretty much put it on that border and make it replace that one color by using replace specific color. So press OK, and you can choose a color to replace. If I change this to black, for instance, anything that's black on this screen will be replaced. So change that to 100, you can see right now a bit of my beard's changed and you've got the, the microphone just here. It's kind of effectively doing what a green screen does, but for a certain color. So if you did use a green screen rather than keying it, you could end up doing that. Or, or it's completely up to you how you do that. But there's a load of settings that you can play around with that to make it a bit more unique for you. But again, it just really adds a nice little dynamic to your scenes and also make sure you use the move value filter. To, to create dynamic changes in that as well. Definitely come by my stream if you want to see that in effect. Um, if there's a sub happening or you just want me to show it you, just ask and I'll show you. So this next one is going to be like a two-in-one. So it's two shader filters that I'm showing you. I'm going to start because we're going to create like an old-timey looking thing. So we're going to use some vignetting and also we're going to use some scan lines as well. So these look really cool, especially if you're doing like oldie-worldie games or you've got an old feel on your stream or maybe you're playing retro games. You can just use scan lines on their own. So let's just add them in and show you how they work. Press filters. We're going to add a user defined shader and we're going to add the uh, vignette in first. So we'll just type in vignette in. Press the load shader, browse, and we're going to search for it down here. They're in alphabetical order, Andy. There we go. You got there this time. Uh, we can change a couple of settings on here. We've got inner radius, outer radius, and opacity. Obviously, opacity is how dark it's going to be around the edges. So as we start increasing that, you can see getting darker and darker until we get to a whole number. And then we can keep actually going as well. It just it's cutting more and more out so it looks darker and darker and you can probably see i'm getting more exposed in the middle as well so you can get some really really cool effects i'm going to leave it on 0.8 uh, as that's the default we can change the inner radius so if we change that to zero you can see the inner radius is zero right now so it's coming all the way into the middle as we start increasing that we get brighter in the middle and it's kind of the, the darker edges are happening further on. So I'm going to leave that at 0.8. The outer radius, this has to be more than the inner radius. Because if the outer radius is less than the inner radius, it will be just a solid line. So you can kind of use it like an image mask in a way. If that's something that you're looking for. It depends on your effects. All these effects are completely editable. So you really just use your imagination. So if we move that to um, 0.9, uh, you'll see it's uh, just a really soft edge and really tight in. Uh, we change it to 1 and we can keep increasing that. And as you can see, it changes the, the dynamic again there. Something that I've not mentioned yet is you can actually use negative numbers. So say if I change the opacity to minus uh, 1, it's inverted it now, so it's lighter on the edges and darker on the inside. So another thing to think about when using shader filters, play around with negative numbers because you can get some really cool reactions as well. So I'm just going to move that to defaults. Let's move on to the next one, and I'm going to remove it. Hang on, it's not going to send that back to defaults because I think I broke it, as always. So I'm just going to move that to 0.8. I'm going to turn it off and add in another effect. So use a defined shader. I'm going to type in scan lines. This one's great, again, for retro games, or uh, Waldo does a really good um, effect where he plays uh, things on a Sunday, and retro games he's playing Pokemon fit in that, isn't it? Because we've just released Pokemon, that's exciting. Uh, and he puts scan lines right through the TV, so it looks like an old TV. It looks really cool. Uh, so we're going to load the shader, press browse, and we're going to go down to scan line shader, 
and open it up. So, as you can see, it's just horizontal lines to start with. But we've got a lot of different effects that we can use in there. So, we've got, uh, if we want it to be lengthways, so depending on... Um, well, as you can see, it's kind of like making the, the lines thicker and everything like that. So, it's just a static image. But we can press animate and you'll see the lines actually start to move. So, you're starting to get that really old looking TV look. Uh, retro gamey and we can change the speed of how much it moves so as you can see as i'm increasing this it's super slow uh move it to 10 you're only getting tiny movements the faster we go you can completely change that to whatever you like as default it's on a thousand which i think is fine change the angle as well so if it's on zero it's just horizontal so you can make any sort of look that you want so I move it to 100 that i quite like the look of that I leave it there We've got shift and boost, so shift messing about with all the light and dynamic effects. As you can see, we're starting to get some flashing in there as well now. And the boost is just boosting the, the light as well. I'll leave them on because it keeps it more stable. But if you're wanting it to look a bit more retro -y, sometimes turning the shift off uh, and the boost it can really give you different kind of dynamic effects. I always say dynamic. As you saw then, it starts flickering a little bit to give it just a bit more of that retro vibe. Uh, and we've got the floor as well. So floor affects the minimum opacity of the scan lines. So this is like, because they're not always going to be the exact same uh, opacity. You can completely change them as well. Fiddle about with it. And then if we turn the uh, vignette in on as well, you can start getting weird and wonderful effects just like so. One more thing to keep in mind when messing around with shaders and other effects as well. Changing the order that they're in can change exactly how they look. But for these two, they both kind of eat into each other really well. So you can't really see too much of a difference there. But remember, putting things in different orders does have a completely different chain of effects. So this one happens first, then this one, okay? So just bear that in mind, right? Let's move on to the final one. Right, so last but by no means least, I love this one. I mean, who's not a fan? Who's not a fan of The Matrix? Do you know what I mean? So you can make your stream look entirely like that this one again is bundled directly in the download for shader filter we press plus go to user defined shader i'm going to type in matrix press ok and this is the ascii um one that we're looking for which is ascii.shader just there and you'll see it brings it up and a load of letters appear look at this all letters wonderful isn't it so there's a lot of different effects uh well settings that we can use in here so the scale for instance if we start cranking that up it makes the text boxes bigger so you can obviously see you can't really tell i mean you can tell it's a person but you can't tell it's really me so it can be cool uh, to use to kind of blur things out on your stream as well in a cool way so say if you're uh, inputting passwords and stuff you could use little block boxes to to make it just look a bit matrixy or something like that so we can actually use monochrome as well and it'll turn it into a single color right now it's black so you can't see it because the canvas is black so if i change it to i don't know let's say a green color you see what i'm saying you can also use a different character set as well so zero is using all capitals and large letters if you use one um we can use um Oh, sorry, large set of non-letters, and if we use that, um, one is a small set of capital letters. It's like I can't, can't bloody read. Changing the scale again, we can turn that down and make it all full one color like this, so it does look very matrixy, and you can see different, different effects that we can get from this. So as we start cranking that up, and again, using the move value filter, you could have it in automatically scale down like this, so... It brings you into focus and going uh, minus numbers makes everything go upside down which is pretty cool again play around with minus numbers like i really like this if you wanted to because you could use it just on certain sections of your stream as well so you can fiddle around with that do whatever you want turn monochrome off if you want it to come through but still look like a person again you can use this to um to blur anything and pull it out again make it look normal it's super cool. I absolutely love that one. And they are just some of my favorite shader filters. I, I don't really use too many on my stream because it can become unpredictable. So I wouldn't recommend editing any fader, sh uh, fader filters. 
Um, all right, um, shader filters on stream because it will kind of, you, you are subject to potentially causing OBS to crash. You will probably find that sometimes when you load up certain shader filters, it might crash or different effects, it might crash. Uh, this is, this is semi-normal. It can be just be a little bit unpredictable. So anytime you are doing any editing and changing of shader filters, please do it whilst you are offline. Cause you don't want to stop a stream or anything like that. Uh, and then lurkers can't reconnect or anything. So make sure you do kind of look after yourself. Do all your edits off stream. Don't do what I do because the amount of times I crash, it's unbelievable. But that's the end of the video, guys. If I have helped you out, please consider being a channel member, subscribing, and also checking out my Patreon. I'm going to be making as much content as I can, as you guys know. And uh, yeah, put your rug in the stone. Much love, and I'll see you in the next one. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full-time, make it free for you guys, and also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.